Welcome to another episode of The Gatekeeper in collaboration with Josephia International Ministries. Good day, friends of Josephia International Audio Ministry. Today I want to do an overview study on the book of Acts. Uh, the abbreviation is BOA, Book of Acts. Okay? So we need, we'll need to read the first few chapters of BOA. When you read it, you cannot but get excited with what our dear Holy Spirit was doing through the Apostles. A few things can be identified and these are good and should be good principles to follow so that we do not mislead others and we ourselves do not get misled by unprincipled and dishonest preachers. So my encouragement today, read through the book of Acts, all right? It's a very exciting book. If you are a new believer, you should, so, and one sitting should be able to read through the whole 20 plus chapter of the book of Acts. Very interesting, exciting. Take note of how the Lord used Apostle Paul. I'm uh, sorry, Peter, right? He was not presumptuous to claim God to him to do this or that or the other. Read in chapter 5 of the book of Acts. There were two events that were recorded here. One was Ananias and Sapphira. They both lied about their giving. Hey, it is okay to give what you have decided in your heart, but do not boast about it. It's very dangerous. The whole attitude behind this couple's uh, giving or why they lied as we read through the book of Acts is they wanted to build a reputation of generosity in the eyes of the community. So they used whatever means, and in this case, they used money as a tool to get the attention and reputation that they so desire. You know, it is an unconscious thing. So a lot of people do for to get attention. And um, in this case, Ananias and Sapphira played the wrong game. You know, God is trying to teach his young newborn church to live godly, honest lives. And so Ananias and Sapphira were examples that he had to use, sadly. Yeah? They have to die before their time. That means they could have lived out fruitful lives, but because they chose to lie to God and to lie to the church, God had to teach the church a lesson about holiness, truthfulness, genuineness. And this is something very dangerous in these modern day churches because people think that they are getting away with their lies, their ulterior motives, their bad intentions. And they say, God doesn't see. Oh, the grace of God, the grace of God, you know. Those are people who are playing with fire. Here we see in the book of Acts, God gave Peter the word of knowledge. And also the bonus, right? Sometimes we we may know something, but we are fearful of speaking it out. I can tell you, if you are not living right before God, you will not dare to be stern or direct. Hearing is the principle. If God says so, it will be fulfilled. Also learn this lesson. God will do a certain thing to teach lessons, not to impress Peter are people that Peter is powerful. Yeah, you know, there is something that is happening nowadays. Often, 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 God use somebody, and then they go around prancing around that they are the only anointed man of God. They only hear from God. They only they can raise the dead. Only they can do miracles. You know, presenting or giving an impression that they are powerful and set aside by God. Not in the book of Acts. God used this event to use Peter to teach people to live honest lives. In our present day situation, we must use this principle to test the preacher or your intentions. Later in the same chapter, we see a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. So many people were healed, saved 
through miraculous signs and wonders. The presence of God was so mighty, even the shadow of Peter healed people. In another, another chapter, we find the sweaty face towel of Apostle Paul while he was working as a tent maker. That sweaty wet towel was also used to heal people. Here's another example to measure the present day claims of preachers and healers. Do they not claim that God has specifically given them a special anointed anointing that others don't have? Well, here in this chapter is a surprise. The Lord is the healer and the Lord is the miracle maker. Peter had no idea that his shadow will heal people. Paul did not know that his sweaty tower will heal people. If they knew, they might be tempted to be like present-day fake preachers. They will sell their anointed towels or shadow, if you want, or even drinking water for a price. Of course, present-day gospel salesmen use more spiritual language like send your love gift to support our ministry and we will send you an anointed handkerchief that will cast out sickness or evil spirit. These are what you call gospel salesmen. I have a personal testimony. I held revival meeting in, a, in many tribal churches in East Malaysia. In a township called Rana, we saw the amazing work of our dear Holy Spirit. One evening, we had many people line up for prayer after service. While I was praying for the sick and needy, on one end of the prayer line, I saw people come under the power of our dear Holy Spirit, falling down on the ground without anyone touching them or praying for them. And when they when they pick themselves up, they exclaim and sort of testify they had been healed without anyone laying hands on them. That is how Holy Spirit work and all glory to Him and Him alone. Another important lesson to learn while we are on this subject is to understand how prophecy works. We will come across many gospel salesmen who claim that for a fee, uh, of course they use a, a more spiritual term called love gift, they can offer you personal or private prophetic word from God. This is not scriptural, okay? Prophecies must be weighed and judged by everyone who is out there especially mature believers. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 gives us this gu guideline. Again, back to the book of Acts chapter 9, we see very recorded very clearly and sufficiently for us. After Paul had encountered a risen Lord at the Damascus road, he became blinded by the powerful shining presence of God. He spent three days fasting and prayer. And I do not think many of us have such powerful experience like Paul. So in this solitude of life-changing experience, he was in deep communion with the Lord, all desire for food and drink disappeared. At the same time, God called Ananias to go and visit Saul. That was Paul's original name before the divine encounter. And Ananias went there to pray for him to receive him back his sight. He was baptized in water and filled with our dear Holy Spirit. This is where the New Testament prophetic uh, exercises. A prophetic word today is not the same as the prophetic utterances recorded by all the Old Testament writers. God's word had already been revealed through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. All we need to do is read the Bible through and through, Know it well, understand the plans of God, because in the Bible we see how God deal with Israel in the Old Testament, and in the New Testament He reveals how He will deal with the church that is in the world today. So present-day prophetic words are built are to build the congregation and to help develop individual spiritual lives. Go back to read First Corinthians, yeah, chapter twelve to chapter fifteen, all right. There are, of course, dreams and visions that the Lord will grant His servant from time to time to fulfill the prophetic word of Joel, chapter 2, 28, and then repeated again by Peter in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 17. 
We heard how a young boy had a dream and warned believers to leave Armenia before the great persecution of believers that took place in that time. That was in early 1900s. Huh? These divine revelations will continue throughout our Christian walk on earth until Jesus come. Praise God. Because God used this to build the church. Yeah, But uh, for the purpose of better understanding what prophetic uh, ministry is in New Testament, we must look carefully at some of the principles that work in the events, events between Ananias and, and Saul. After Saul had a mighty divine encounter with Jesus on the road to, um, in, uh, near Damascus, then he later on his name became Paul. We must understand that after Holy Spirit has been poured out on all who believe in him, we will receive the gifts listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There are three vocal gifts, tongue, interpretation of tongue and prophecy. And there are three knowing gifts, the discerning of, holy, of uh, gifts, discerning of spirits, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the, uh, the final category are the power gifts, miracles, healing, and faith. These gifts can function in believers. It all depends on each individual to ask, to learn, to exercise these gifts. To me, the perfect gift does not function by itself independently from the rest of the eight gifts. It, it, it usually uh, works together with several other gifts, such as word of knowledge, word of wisdom, together working together to encourage believers as we minister to them. So let's go back to the story of Ananias and Sapphira. Saul was struck down by the power of God and the intense glory and brightness of the Lord caused Saul to be blinded. Saul is now seeking more of the Lord and Ananias was exactly there where Saul was because God directed Ananias. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please share it. For more updates, please hit the subscribe button and click on the bell for notification.